All right, you lot, how is everyone? Today is just a quick drawing that I did at the beginning of my current sketchbook, just showing all of my most used tools at this moment in time. I think it's a good, easy way to fill a page. It's also a nice record to look back on to see what your favorite tools were at the time. So I asked you all for some questions on Instagram a few weeks ago, so I'm gonna spend this video answering as many of those as I can. Let's get straight into it. So the very first question I got was from Sky later, and they asked, why I started drawing. Um, I also have a similar question from Abby T Photography who wants to know how I originally got into art. Um, I've always been drawing. It started as just a fun way to pass the time as a kid. I used to go to an after-school art club on Mondays, uh, dance on Tuesdays, French on Wednesdays, basketball on Thursdays, and I enjoyed all those things. I wish I'd carried on with them, but art is the thing that stuck. I think because I didn't really see it as a task or an activity or something that needed practice. I was just doing it for the sake of doing it. I liked playing with paint and paper and pens and stuff as soon as I was old enough to hold them. Uh, King K wants to know what you can do when you can't translate your thoughts onto paper. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. That can be really discouraging and also, I don't know if anyone else gets this, but sometimes the more it goes wrong on paper, the more I lose the mental image of what I had wanted to do in the first place. The best thing you can do is get in the habit of drawing very small, quick thumbnail sketches to get the general sense and shape and composition of the idea down, really loose and small, and then you can work from that initial sketch and the idea in your head when it comes to creating the finished piece. Gavi Yeet asks, what keeps you running and inspired through the harder days? Uh, just kind of going with it, trying not to get down on myself because that's just going to make things worse. And knowing that I've been there before and gotten over it so I can do it again. Luna Lou asks, what video, uh, photo and lighting equipment I use? A few people asked about this. Um, I always have all the equipment I use listed in the description under videos, just saying what specific camera and tripod I use for that video. I generally use the seven, Canon 700D with either the kit lens, a 50mm lens or a 24mm lens, depending on what kind of shot I'm using it for. In terms of lighting, I have a really bright desk light and also a couple of those big umbrella lights, but I very rarely use either of those. I rely a lot on natural light, uh, it just looks the best. All my photos and things are in natural light. Simon Says says, do you ever feel guilty for not making art for a while? I do, and the longer you leave it, the harder it is to get back into it. Um, it's especially difficult knowing that I've kind of made a promise to consistently share content and I worry about people getting bored or impatient, but generally I just kind of know that it'll come when it comes and there are things that you can do to give yourself a push in the right direction, like I talked about in my recent getting out of a rut video. So I let myself feel bad for a bit and then I just kind of go with the flow. Caramel Cheese Popcorn wants to know how important a clean workspace is for me. For me it's really important, I get very antsy very quickly in a kind of busy, cluttered space and when it comes to making art I want to feel completely free and clear and open. Uh, with that said, I don't think it's important in general, I think it's more of a me thing. I can see how having all your things around you is convenient and can spark ideas and I'm a huge advocate for making a mess when it comes to art, which is a lot easier when you're already in a messy state. Uh, quite a few people asked what inspires me. I'm generally more visually stimulated, like seeing a particular colour scheme in nature or a cool building or a pretty face on TV. I see things and think I want to draw that, seeing great art as well, thinking I want to make something that beautiful. I also got a lot of people asking about artists I admire. At the moment I'm loving Ian McHugh, um, Kim Jong-gi, James Jean, Loish. Um, on YouTube, James Gurney, Teo Yi Chi, Elisa Draws. Watercolour Misfit is doing a beginner's watercolour series that's taught me a lot recently. Bao Pham does the most incredible gouache paintings and Biana Bova gives great advice on everything. The way she gets her points across just makes things make sense. And also what music I listen to for inspiration, uh, what music I listen to when working in general, um, favourite songs. So I've recently been listening to the new Kendrick. I've also been listening to a lot of Daniel Caesar. I would say that at the moment my favourite song is Get You. Um, 
Childish Gambino, Frank Ocean, Anderson Pack. I will have all these names and links to the artists I mentioned earlier below, by the way. Um, the music I listen to for inspiration, just either calm or nostalgic or a bit of both. A good beat with a nice old sample that makes me smile is my favourite. Frustrationist wants to know, how do you deal with envy when nothing you make looks good to you? Envy, I got in the habit of recognising those feelings as soon as they came up and not shutting them down but like turning it into admiration and aspirations for myself. If I see someone doing something amazing and my first thought is like, oh I wish I could do that or I'll never be that good, I'll very purposefully stop and think, actually good for them, they're amazing, they've clearly worked for it and if I work for it I can get there too. Even if you don't believe it at first, getting in the habit of shifting that way of thinking has such a positive influence and I personally believe in the power of your words and your thoughts and constantly putting yourself down is only going to keep you down. If you tell yourself you're doing great and you're hoping to get better, then you'll see yourself improving. In terms of when nothing you make looks good to you, you could try a more practical approach of pinpointing what it is that isn't going great in your work and then studying and practicing that. Uh, for people asking about whether I studied art, um, what I majored in, etc. I think I talked about it in my last Q&A, but I haven't studied art other than at secondary school. I studied Spanish and English at uni and I dropped out. Jono X wants to know my favourite emoji. Um, my most used has got to be the two pink hearts and the suspicious or guilty side eye. A lot of people asked about art and social media, getting your work out there and shared. Uh, it's really tough, I think it's too much for me to cover here, but there are tons of videos on YouTube talking about it, talking about it for art specifically or for particular social media platforms in general. I think the best thing to do is learn as much as you can about each area of social media where you want to grow. Get all the tips you can from not just artists but people who use social media for their business. All the info you need is already out there. There's so much on Google or on YouTube, and yeah, put together a plan, monthly goals broken down into things that you can do every day to get you going in the right direction. It's a lot of work. Martina Violet asks my favorite holiday I've been on. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I really don't know. I went to Vegas when I was like 13. That was pretty exciting. At the time I was obsessed with CSI, so it was just a dream come true for me to be there. I think Probably the best moment I've had on a holiday was a couple of summer go summers ago after visiting the ancient ruins of Chichen Itza in Mexico. We went swimming in one of the cenotes, like a sinkhole, a deep cave into the earth full of fresh water that just goes down and down and down underneath you for miles and it started pouring with rain, thunder and lightning and I've never felt so close to mother nature and just the strength and authority of the planet that we're on. So yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm back in Mexico now so soon. Um, people asking about whether there will be more copies of the 30 Ways to Fill a Sketchbook book. I really appreciate that so many people are interested in it and I'm really sorry to the people that didn't get one, but unfortunately limited edition does mean a limited edition. You can't sell something on the premise that there will be only a certain number of them in the whole world and then go and make more. So I'm afraid that's it, but there will always be other things like it to come in the future. No Thanks Mika asks if I prefer coffee or tea. Definitely coffee, I am a disgrace to British people, but I cannot stand tea. Jonah Veliz asks, what is your favorite film? For like all time favorite, things that I could watch again and again, and I know every single line. It's a weird toss up between Save the Last Dance, which was the go-to for every single sleepover I went to as a child, and 28 Days Later. I have no words to describe how much I love that film. So those are the two films that I would never say no to watching. A couple of people wanted to know if I have any tattoos. Uh, no, I love them, but I'm too indecisive to have something permanent on my skin. Grace Stew wants to know, can you do a handstand or a cartwheel? I actually can't. I was so jealous of my sister and her gymnastics growing up, but for the life of me, I cannot do it. Nana, Nana Gasparini wants to know about watercolor sketchbooks I'd recommend that aren't moleskin. I would say Strathmore do great ones, um, Stillman and Byrne are my current fave. I have a question here from Somnia who asks how I learned editing and if I have any tips. I just know in my head 
how I want a video to look so I try my best to do that and then if there's something I can't do I'll go online and learn about it. So that would be my advice if you I think if you have a clear vision of how you want your video to look and I don't think you can ever be too ambitious in that sense just seek out the information that you need to achieve it. Like I said before all the information you need is out there if you just look for it. Dayara Kami asks my opinion on copying artists as practice. I feel like when we're younger, we all started out drawing our favourite cartoon characters, Disney princesses. I used to use my mum's greaseproof cooking paper and trace Snow White from the cover of the VHS videotape I had of the film and then copy it onto bits of paper. That's how you learn in the beginning stages of drawing and that way of learning doesn't go away the better you get or the older you get. Copying, I think, will always be able to give you valuable lessons. However, I don't believe in only copying. I think it should be done here and there while you work on your own style and also actually studying different aspects of art. Also, obviously, if you're going to share your copied artwork, give proper credit. I personally don't ever show stuff that I've copied, copied because I feel like that's just something I did for me. It's not for show and it's not my art, but that's just me. Uh, Do's and Donuts says, I just want you to acknowledge my existence. Love you so much. Love you too. For people asking for tips on building a YouTube channel, I don't have anything new to suggest that I didn't say in my last Q&A and also just the general tips that you always hear. I'd recommend looking into channels that are about the business side of YouTube if you really want to take it seriously. Roberto Blake is good for that, um, analytics and search engine optimization and all that other boring stuff. Other than that, I feel like people are still just waiting for the secret, but that is it. Just be consistent and be patient. It takes time and the only thing that will help the time fly is if you're doing it for fun because you enjoy it and not for the numbers or for the money. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know about studying anatomy. Um, I would say all you need to start with is maybe one good book. Just search on Amazon for an anatomy book. I have one called Anatomy for Artists. Read it, don't just look at the pictures, understand how this connects to this and then draw the things that you've learned about. If that doesn't sound like the kind of studying environment that works for you, Stan Propopenko from the channel Proko here on YouTube has a ton of anatomy videos that might help you. Uh, Lawrence wants to know my bucket list travel destinations. Well, in terms of continents, I've never been to anywhere in Asia, so I'd love to do that at some point. Also, this is terrible, but out of all the far off places I've been to, I've never been anywhere in the UK outside of England, which is crazy considering that Wales is just a few hours drive away from me and Scotland and Ireland are a short flight or long drive. So I've got to go to all of those countries too. In terms of specific places, I'd love to go to Angkor Wat, which is a set of temples in Cambodia. It just looks incredible. Emily Mayer asks how I rate the Stillman and Burns sketchbooks compared to Moleskine. Yeah, I think they're great. I don't mind Moleskine though. My most recent Moleskine was absolutely perfect for what I used it for. But like the quality that you expect a Moleskine to be, I would say is what you actually get with Stillman and Burn. La 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 Lia says, why are you so into bears? I just think they look like big clumsy furry people when they stand on their hind legs and I also just find them really impressive. Glory Aylin asks, do you think it's possible for one to become an artist without going to an art school? Yeah, absolutely. Artist is actually one of those few jobs where you can potentially get by with just your talent and no documentation saying that you're qualified. It's not like if you wanted to be a doctor and you're just really good at diagnosing people but you've never been to medical school. Going to art school could really help you with preparing for your career in art, but it isn't essential in my opinion. Uh, YCS Yosemite, I don't know how you say that, um, asks, how often do you draw? Do you have a schedule that you follow or do you just draw whenever you're inspired? Um, a lot of people also ask if I draw every day. I try to draw every morning after I've had a shower and had my breakfast. I tidy my room a little bit, sit at my desk and try to draw. That's my routine. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but I'm working on getting into it more permanently. Right, and for the very last question, this one is from Squarefaced, and they want to know, what is your favourite quote? How tall are you? Well, I just measured myself for you, Squarefaced, and I am about five foot six. And my favourite quote, I don't know who said it originally, but it's, 
everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, then it's not the end. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there are things that you'll be able to take away from this and maybe you'll feel like you know me a little bit better. For more insight, you can always check out my last Q&A video. But for now, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.